Hey YouTubers, Jen True here with the True Valley Life channel. Thanks so much for hanging out with me this morning. Um, so here we are, week four of the maple sugar boil. It is about 9 a.m. Uh, here on Saturday morning. We've been out here since about just before 5 a.m. I was out here at about 4.30. Um, and so far, we've boiled down that sap and we got 20 more gallons over there and another just about five there. Um, so, you know, we're doing very well uh, for time so far today. Um, so one of the things I wanted to talk about today with the video is, and that I haven't yet touched upon, is what do you do um, when you get the fire raging too much and it overboils? I don't even know if some of you knew that that's possible because um, maple sap boils at a higher temperature than water so it's kind of hard sometimes to keep that boil um, but as you can see it does overflow sometimes um, and basically what you do when your pan overflows and we'll go ahead and I'll try to simulate it a little bit without losing without losing the sap I'll just get it going a little bit, fill it up, get the fire raging. So you just basically, um, you know, you want to keep the fire going so that the sap is at a nice rapid boil. Um, but you don't want to have it so that it starts to foam up and uh, overflow. So we'll get this going. But basically you can see that it has overflowed today, right here. And when that happens is we just have a like a long stick and you just want to even the, the fire out um, so that it's not hitting the, the top of the pan so much that the, the boil is so rapid that it, it's foaming and overflowing. So you can just take a stick and kind of just even out. You would just even out and flatten that flame, pulling it towards you. You wouldn't want to push it because of the flu. And you always want to be careful um, and be cognizant of the pans above the fire. But that's basically what you would do. It's just flatten that fire out a little bit. Sometimes you get a little, little overzealous with uh, adding in the firewood and uh, it'll It'll overflow. So here we go. We got a nice rapid boil on. And I just evened it out so that it wouldn't boil over. All right. So I hope you learned something uh, with that tip there. Um, but you really want to keep that nice, nice rapid boil like this because that is how you get all that awesome evaporation. So you just keep stoking the fire. So one of the other things I wanted to touch upon today is, you know, we're in week four now of maple sugaring season. And what starts to happen, um, you know, some taps will provide more sap than others. Um, and so that's why I have a tendency to tap some trees like lower, like two feet from the ground, some trees like four feet from the ground, like about chest high. Um, so, you know, and that's obviously dependent upon the snow depth that year. And so one of the things I wanted to talk about is at this time of the year, we're getting into spring. And basically the way that the sap run works is as soon as the daytime temperature in the spring, it's pretty much after the full moon in February is from my experience when it starts to run. But some years, you know, it's not always, there's always a few things that, that go into, to, you know, to take into consideration when the sap is going to run in that one specific year. But anyway, um, just had to check the sap. <laughs> I just want to make sure we're doing good. Um, so one thing to know is as you get further in the season, the way that the sap works is 
it runs when the temperature starts to warm during the day the sap comes from the roots and starts to go up to the tree now if you have your tap height at two feet you're gonna get a run and more sap production earlier in the year if you have your taps higher then you're gonna get sap later in the year because the way that it works is in the first few weeks it'll rise and then fall because as the temperature goes up through the day up to 32 it'll rise up into the tree and then it will fall back down at night and that kind of vacuum like type um, situation is what gets that that's that like sap flow okay so as the season goes on the sap will get higher into the tree and it will fall less Okay, so if your tap height is at two feet and the sap has already run up higher into the tree, then you won't have as much sap or if any sap production at all from that tap. So sometimes it's nice to have different tap heights um, so that you can sustain a certain amount of sap throughout the entire season. Um, so that's just a tip. The other thing to know too is um, the different grades of maple syrup you really don't have much control over that at all. It's what the tree gives you. So light versus amber versus dark, that's all dependent on the sap and the time of year in which you harvest that sap. Um, so that's just a few things I wanted to talk about today um, that I hadn't spoke of in um, past videos. So, you know, I always try to talk about something fresh in each one of my videos. Um, and then, you know, one of the other things I haven't spoke of is how do you tap a maple tree? Well, I did take a video when I tapped these trees uh, several weeks ago. I think it's been about five weeks now. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll drop that in the comments in the description below. And um, you guys can check that out. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you get all my new stuff. Thank you so much and have a great day and get outside. Bye now.